over a hundred years, Maserati has specialized in handcrafting high-performance, luxurious four-seat machines. And they've done it while operating in the shadow of the most iconic Italian car makers in the world. Maserati's known for being the kid brother to Ferrari. Now, the time has come for the brand to make a name for itself. We went back to look at how we should we took inspiration uh, for doing the Maserati of the future. Their goal, to combine Italian sex appeal with supercar performance inside of a four-door machine, and then shrink the supercar. Maserati needs to look amazing and grab your attention, otherwise it doesn't have a reason to exist. It's a bold move designed to open up new markets and increase production tenfold. It's a little bit ambitious, but it's also a little Italian in its um, drama. The future of Maserati hangs in the balance, and it's called the Ghibli. In the world of supercars, there is perhaps no more competitive location than Northern Italy. It's home to Ferrari, Lamborghini, Pagani, and Maserati. Just as the country has faced ups and downs, so too has its automotive industry. Maserati went through a lot of hard times in the 60s and 70s and 80s. And the cars are basically cobbled together. In 1993, after years of fits and starts and poorly produced machines, Italian auto conglomerate Fiat purchases the Maserati brand. They place the company under the direction of their most famous mark, Ferrari. Ferrari took over, basically gutted it, and changed the way that they put together cars. It's a luxury one-two punch for the wealthy. Ferrari for supercars and Maserati for super saloons. Maserati was the car you drive every day and then get in your Ferraris on the weekends. After decades of living in the shadows, Maserati is ready to call attention to itself. We started to think how to uh, turn over the Maserati and we went back to look how we should we took inspiration for doing the Maserati of the future. For years, the company has had success with their flagship model, a luxury saloon called the Quattro Porte. But in order to expand, it's clear the brand needs to do something unexpected. The big problem is that Maserati just hasn't had the cars. I mean, they've had a really big sedan that was beautiful and stunning, but getting old. We have meeting, the product team uh, gets together and uh, lines up the future of the brand. What would be the car that we have to have in the portfolio? The challenge here for Maserati is simple. Maserati needs to sell more cars. For the past decade, Maserati has sold just over 6,000 cars per year. The company takes their flagship supercar and shrinks it into a smaller, more affordable package. Maserati needs a car that sells more, and a midsize sedan is the right place to be. It's never quite so easy as saying, you know, honey, I shrunk the Quattroporte. The smaller model is coined the Ghibli, tracing back to Maserati's glory days. The Ghibli is an important historic name for Maserati. And the Ghibli was um, a coupe that, that was a competitor to such cars as the Miura from Lamborghini or the Daytona from Ferrari, and was one of the most performing and exclusive two-seater coupe of that period. Paired with the launch of a revamped Quattroporte, the Ghibli is a key element in the brand's expansion plans. The two projects were six months uh, one from the other. We had the chance to think about the two cars as two ambassadors of the Maserati design. Starting at 52,000 euros, the Ghibli enters territory loaded with steep international competition. Any misstep will spell disaster for the brand. Once you move under $100,000, you start to compete with cars like the BMW 5 Series, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class, and the Audi A6. And those cars sell in serious numbers, and that's what Maserati's going for. The Ghibli's goal is to open up new markets and increase sales to 50,000 units. The Ghibli enters the brand in an area has never been present before, with the ambition to raise the number of Maserati from uh, less than 10,000 to more than 50,000. 
So it's a big bet. That big bet starts at the Fiat Design Center in Torino, Italy. A cutting edge facility that the public normally never gets to see. It's here where 200 men and women with an average age of just 37 determine the future of the brand. The process starts with a collage. Image boards help designers define the brand's ideals. Since 2011, the man with the final say is Lorenzo Ramacotti, the head of design for every single Fiat brand, including Ferrari and Maserati. Designing a car is a, is a very complex activity, but um, if the foundation are good, it's much more easy to get to a, a satisfactory result. And in this case, we had a very good foundation from the mechanical layer. Ramacotti decides that in order to differentiate the two machines, his design team must focus the Quattroporte on elegance while building the Ghibli around speed. We decide to go with the Ghibli more in the sporty direction. The process takes months, full of long days. And long nights. As the pressure continues to mount for the brand to increase Maserati's sales, designers get to work shrinking their flagship. Cutting the saloon down begins inside the Fiat virtual reality room. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Ciao. How are you? Where the team literally goes over the machine point by point. To give the Ghibli a sporty feel, designers shrink the machine's wheelbase the distance between the front and rear wheels. The team cuts the machine down by 173 millimeters, which is nearly the height of a wine glass. There's always a big problem making a sporty sedan, because if you make it too sporty, the back seat doesn't work. And there's a compromise there. You're never going to have a sedan that looks like a supercar from every angle and still be usable. To double check the basic proportions, designers move to a more traditional form of streamlining. They tape the body by hand to ensure that each line is perfect. The idea is uh, to go a little bit back to the, um, the sporty cars of Maserati of the 60s. You can do, obviously, with the engine, uh, suspension and other things, but to transfer this feeling with the design is not easy. While the most striking change is the Ghibli's size, the team knows that it's the interior that will sell the car to a luxury crowd. We took inspiration from everything, from nature, from architecture, in order to be different. They use a full-size model of the interior cockpit, called a design buck, to plan the inside of the cabin. One of the inspiration was the helmet of a warrior. For example, you can see these elements, it looks like the mask. No matter the machine's proportions, it still requires an Italian touch of style. On the other side of the studio, that look and feel comes to life thanks to image boards that define potential customers. We can have different kind of people driving the car. This is, for instance, a person that's like doing lots of uh, sports and that has a very outdoor lifestyle, a uh, sense of freedom and the challenge and, and all this. We try to look at the details of uh, all the accessories that they could be wearing. We try then to find materials that could be matching and uh, not just in the, in the colors uh, atmosphere, but also in the attitude. The result? is an Italian interior tailored for a mass market audience. Because it's uh, very important to us to see the matching of the colors, if uh, something could work together, because sometimes it works in your mind, but then when you see it, the reality doesn't. While shrinking the car is one challenge, 
Achieving supercar performance on a mid-sized saloon budget is another. Engineers figure out how to do it inside of the Maserati Corsa facility, located just outside of Modena, Italy. There are demands, both on the design you see and uh, on the design you don't see, for reaching supercar performance. Right away, engineers know outright efficiency is essential. The supercar have a super performance. They also have a super request, in the sense that you have to have a very good aerodynamic performance uh, in terms of uh, drag resistance. To compete with supercars at a fraction of the price, designers work endlessly in the wind tunnel to find the lowest drag coefficient possible. Drag represents the amount of resistance an object faces as it travels through the air. The lower the drag, the easier it is for the car to cut through the wind. And the faster it goes. The car has a lot of drag. You spend a lot of money to run it, and the speed is not so high. Meanwhile, engineers work to keep weight down with affordable materials. What you can see and this, uh, in this car is, uh, that goes a little beyond design is the, the fight for weight reduction. The team engineers the majority of the machine out of aluminium, including the hood, doors, boot lid, and fenders. But saving weight goes more than skin deep. And this was also to reach the performance through the reduction of weight. Reducing weight has been a hallmark of Italian supercars for decades. Maserati has a unique knowledge with the material because it is the oldest automotive mark in La Terra di Motori, otherwise known as Italy's Motor Valley. The company was founded in 1914 by seven brothers. Six were car enthusiasts, one was an artist. For the next 12 years, the brothers modify cars in a quest for speed. But in 1926, they branch out and build their very first car from the ground up, the Type 26. It wins its very first race, the Targa Florio, one of the most dangerous races in the world. The Type 26 was the very first Maserati to feature a trident on the grill. Seven brothers work in the company, except one that was uh, an artist. And the brother asked him to design the logo for their new company. And uh, he took inspiration from the trident that is uh, in the hands of a statue in Bologna. A logo inspired by the Neptune statue in Bologna's Piazza Maggiore, and featured prominently on the Maserati factory in Modena, Italy. The area is hallowed ground for supercar fans, but the Maserati factory in Modena was built when the city was still farmland. This is the birthplace of the modern supercar, and Maserati is among those brands. Today, Modena is a bustling city. There's no place left for the brand to expand. Maserati has embarked on a new chapter with a fresh take on the luxury saloon market. But they've outgrown the company's historic home in Modena, Italy. To build the Ghibli, they need a new factory. So the team zeroes in on another Italian automotive center. Torino is a kind of uh, a counterpart for Detroit because it's really a motor city. It's uh, been living around car manufacturing plants for almost one century. You have uh, your Silicon Valley in California for computer, software, etc. Here is an uh, area where uh, most of the uh, sportive uh, engines are born, is uh, northern Italy. In order to have any chance of returning to the forefront of Italian motoring, Maserati must push for exponential growth. In order to survive, Maserati needs to sell more cars. However, dramatic expansion is not without its challenges. To produce a car with this kind of uh, volume, we need to have uh, a complete new plan. So it was absolutely impossible to foresee an increase in production from 10,000 to 50,000. So there was the need for a plant where the two cars, the Quattroporti and the Ghibli, that share many components in technical terms, could be produced together on the same flexible line. 
The solution is to move production from Modena to Grugliasco, Turin. The facility had been shut for three years before Maserati's corporate parent, Fiat, spends one billion euros to bring it back to life. This was a plant that produced car starting from 1963. Then in 2006, they stopped to produce and for five years, the plant was closed. And in 2011, we bought this plant and now we are producing new Maserati. They had already a paint shop uh, that was possible to convert, and finally, uh, we took the decision to rehaul completely the plant. We removed all the equipment in less than one year. The new Grugliasco plant has the capacity to build up to 200 units per day using three shifts. Here we have a body white, we have paint shop, we have assembly shop. All the plant is dedicated to produce Ghibli and Patroport. You think that two years ago this was a closed plant with nothing, and now we are producing 140 cars per day with more than 2,000 people involved in the production, is clearly a very, very good thing. The Grugliasco factory is a new home for an old brand but they start building the Ghibli in a very traditional way. By manufacturing the frame inside of the state-of-the-art body shop. Where the first step is building sub-assemblies for the front and rear portions of the chassis. Once completed, each sub-assembly heads to the main welding line, where Ghibli bodies come to life one spark at a time. There are more than a thousand welds in each machine, and each weld uses enough electricity to power a house for a week. All of the complicated aluminium engineering pays off. The Ghibli weighs 50 kilograms less than its big brother, the Quattroporte. Less weight helps acceleration. The fastest Ghibli does zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just 4.8 seconds, a heady time for a family saloon. But speed alone isn't enough when you're trying to sell to new markets. The Ghibli must also look the part. It's the Italian styling that adds the required supercar glamour. We are always on the blade because it's not something that is so extreme. It's classic, but not static. Maserati want to put this uh, kind of dynamic proportion on the sedan, and this is the big difference. It's just a different kind of experience from the German stuff. There's a little bit more art in there than science. Bringing the look and feel of a sexy Italian supercar to the realm of everyday drivers is not as easy as it seems. It introduces the engineering team to a new kind of challenge. One of the challenges for Maserati in transitioning from supercar to a supercar sedan 
is that they have to think about more conventional things like putting a child seat in the back or keeping people safe. To be competitive in the mid-sized luxury saloon market, engineers and designers need to focus just as much on safety as high performance. That safety is tested here, inside a crash test facility. To meet modern crash standards, the Ghibli chassis is built around a safety cell. The airbags are fully deployed in 50 milliseconds, one third of the time it takes for an average car crash, and literally the time it takes to blink an eye. The safety cell is built with a combination of different steel and aluminium alloys in order to channel the energy most effectively during a crash. That's important because the forces acting on a car during a crash can exceed 550 kilonewtons. That's over 30 times the weight of the Ghibli itself, and 500 times the force of gravity. With the machine's safety requirements solved, the team turns its attention to more traditional Italian concerns. This car, there, there was not inside of the Maserati world. There is a combination of proportions and of design language. The, the elements are the same elements we use to build uh, the Maserati image, but are played in a much more aggressive and strong way. The Ghibli looks like a classic Italian supercar, Maserati has shrunken their supercar in order to design and engineer a new mid-sized saloon. To bring it to market, they've had to rebuild a factory. But the Ghibli still needs a cutting-edge power plant in order to compete on the world stage. Paolo Martinelli, a former Ferrari Formula One engine designer, is the man tasked with bringing not one, but two new Maserati power plants to life. The main goal is to realize an engine with absolutely top performances in a range of volume that uh, was a step ahead. The brand builds two V6 engines, a fuel-efficient diesel and a petrol-based variant built with performance in mind. It's no surprise where that engine comes from. Maserati engine is manufactured 100% in Maranello. Maranello, Italy is the home of Ferrari and where all Maserati engines have been built since 2002. Martinelli decides it's the best place to build the new naturally aspirated V6 engine, a three liter power plant that cranks out a potent 404 horsepower. It brings a lot of the racing heritage of Maserati, racing heritage of Ferrari into this car. Showcasing the brand's racing heritage was Maserati's most important goal. The new Ghibli, however, is entering a market where fuel economy is just as important as outright performance. For the first time in the Mark's history, they introduce a diesel engine. Yeah, putting a diesel in it is a totally different approach, but they need that engine to sell in Europe. The twin-turbocharged 3-liter V6 is built at the VM Motori plant in Cento, Italy. I mean, they don't hand-build these cars the same way they built Maseratis in the 1960s, but it's the same people with the same kind of passion for the cars. And if you ever go to a, you know, an Italian car factory, these people are passionate. Both engines have supercar sensibilities. The question is whether or not the brand can build enough for mass production. The challenge is to realize a project for a sportive engine, but in a bigger volume. They made it very public that within five years, they wanted to sell 50,000 cars worldwide. Now, Maserati is a company that struggled to sell 5,000 cars in a good year. 10 times their volume is a very ambitious goal. But a car like this, if it takes off, if it starts selling well, will be a crucial part of that. Engineers test both engines repeatedly in a climate-controlled environment that replicates the warmest and coldest places on the planet. 
Uh, of course, uh, there are uh, data that uh, we normally call it uh, computational fluid dynamic. The room ranges from minus 40 degrees centigrade all the way to 50 degrees centigrade. They tune the signature Maserati sound as well. Maserati, I think, is a nice car in terms of styling and in terms of performances and with the feeling and the sound, for instance, of the Maserati. One of the characteristics is uh, when you push the gas pedal, your exhaust system is able to inform you that you are driving a Maserati. While the team continues to refine the two engines, at the Grugliasco factory in a cutting-edge paint shop, bare Ghibli bodies get ready for some colour. First, the aluminium body is prepped. Body gaps are measured by hand to ensure perfect panel alignment. Look, Italian is all about sex appeal. A lot of it doesn't really matter what is underneath the car. It's that appeal when you first look at it. And the Ghibli certainly looks different. Once the bodywork passes quality control, the bare metal is ready to be dipped in an electrochemical bar that prevents rust. Here the car is coming from uh, seven different bots to prepare the body for uh, the very first paint. We gave a negative charge to the body and a positive one to the, to the bot. With this electric charge, the paint can stick very, very strong to the, to the body. After this uh, 10 to 12 minutes bath, the car is ready for a second wash and to uh, oven treatment to dry the, the paint coat. Now it's time for some paint. The Ghibli is available in 13 colors, each of which is applied by a combination of artisan painters and high-tech robots. The robots spin paint at 45,000 revolutions a minute, and they're extremely precise. The margin for error in the paint shop is plus or minus half a millionth of a centimeter. That's a little wider than a human hair. At the last station, each body gets a clear coat. Robots do make some things more efficient, but it's not a way that you would think of everything is being done by robots. And they're checking them, and they're really working on them, and then they're moving on to the next. It's a much slower process. Finally, each body is polished by hand until there's a mirror-like finish. Now the newly painted body is ready to head to the line. This is the first station of our assembly shop. We have Quattro Porta and Ghibli. We produce both in the same line. There is a Ghibli that arrived from paint shop. Here the car drops down from uh, the chain.
In the first three stations, we assembly the cables. While both vehicles share one line, the emphasis on individual quality and care is paramount. And for us, it was important to have a plan that is according with the history of Maserati. Accuracy in the, in the assembly is mandatory for a kind of car like this, a supercar. The most important thing that we use a lot of very skilled workers have the ability to assure the very good quality that we need. While building the factory took almost a year, it takes even longer to train a new workforce to operate it. 300,000 hours of training because we need to have people that know very well our production method. A production method that's based on the brand's historic roots. So that whole kind of feeling of old world craftsmanship. A tradition that continues on the dashboard sub-assembly line, where they installed a steering column, wiring harness, Then it's time for the instrument panel, which features a high-tech touch control screen and Bowers and Wilkes audio system. Once complete, the dashboard is sent to the line. It's one of 3,000 parts that must be coordinated within the factory. Then it's time for the interior, which features an advanced Wi-Fi system intended to lure a much younger demographic. Each system is installed by hand. A historic Maserati building trait that's hard to continue as the brand tries to increase volume. They've never tried to build on this scale, so yet they also need to make sure the quality stays high. And that's a little bit hard to do when you've got to do so many cars and you've got to turn them over so much more quickly. Each body is transported across the factory by a series of yellow hooks. These yellow hooks allow us to have always a perfect uh, position for the worker. The hooks can rotate nearly 90 degrees. We can also rotate the car to work on the bottom part of the body and the pipes of the brake system. With this chain, we can also transport all the bodies along the chassis line and also send the car to the last station of the final line. Maserati inherited the C-hook technology from Ferrari. And on the other side of the factory, engines arrive from Maranello. Each engine's treated with care as it's escorted to the line. We're in the first station of the powertrain area and we put the engine together with the gearbox. So we received this engine from Ferrari. This uh, kind of engine and this kind of gearbox is one of the reasons of the success of this car. You could build anything in Marinello and say, hey, Ferrari built it, and it would be amazing. It's the Ferrari engine. They are the engine gods. So if they're building this V6, why wouldn't you tell the world? They connect it to a ZF eight-speed automatic transmission. Once pre-assembled, the engine is sent to the drivetrain line. We're in the center of the powertrain area. Here we put together the front and rear suspension, the engine and the gear shaft. Workers attach the exhaust pipes. The front suspension is bolted on. Then radiators are installed. The half-built drivetrain is then transferred to another line. 
where craftsmen install the back half of the unique Maserati exhaust system. Workers install the drive shaft. Fuel cell. Once the drivetrain is built up, it's ready to meet the body. We're in the middle of chassis line. This is the mariage station. Here we put together the body and all the powertrain components. The drivetrain joins the body of the car and is held together by just 18 bolts. Bolts that the brand is counting on for global growth. This is probably the entry-level Italian exotic car. Otherwise, you're spending six figures, and this car's under six figures, and there just aren't any other players in that segment from Italy. Maserati's plans are clear. For decades, the Trident has stood for Italian luxury. But culture constantly evolves. Symbols alone don't get the job done. Maserati's answer is to gamble on the Ghibli. And you want to do cars that can um, stand a long time without getting dated or uh, getting old. You want to make kind of instant classic. Inside the Grugliasco factory, that instant classic is taking shape one bumper at a time. assembly the front area and bumpers and the wheels. With the bodywork finished, it's time for some hot wheels. Then, the luxury seats. And doors. The Ghibli is almost ready for prime time. But before it can leave the factory, it has to hit the road. We are in front of the rolling test bench. We test 100% uh, of our car till a top speed of 140 kilometers per hour. This test is to verify the perfect adjustment of the engine shaft. Once the Ghibli has put the pedal to the metal, it's time for a bump in the road, a 50 kilometer long pothole. followed by a lengthy shower to look for leaks. We are in front of the water test. We clean the car after the road test in the first part of the tunnel. And the second part of this machine is to test the waterproof ceiling of the car. A few more final checks and the machine is ready for the real world. Where its first task will be to broaden the brand's appeal and lead their growth. Maserati is not super well known. You hear the name Maserati, and it evokes something Italian, something expensive, but not necessarily a four-door sedan. Maserati exists in this strange kind of place where everyone associates it with Ferrari. And the biggest challenge for Maserati is getting people to realize that it's not a ridiculously expensive car. Starting at 52,000 euros, the machine thrusts the mark into new territory that's radically different than Ferrari, its corporate parent. BMWs and Mercedes and Audis are just kind of everywhere these days. If you want to stand out and have something different, you can have a Maserati. That's a, that's a big difference. That big difference has led to a very big bet, all in the hopes of growing tenfold. Maserati wants to sell a lot of cars because you need to sell a lot of cars to keep your profits up and run a successful business. 
Maserati hopes to go from 5,000 units a year to 50,000. They need to weigh the pros and cons of moving down market. There's definitely more of a con, especially if they're chasing 50,000 sales. To chase sales, the brand is banking on its Italian heritage. Cars have kind of picked up traits of their home countries. And Italian cars have always had this idea passionate and very beautiful and elegant to look at. That Italian passion culminates inside of the engine bay, where the Ferrari-built twin-turbo V6 generates 404 horsepower. The engine reaches 90% of its 550 newton meters of torque at just 4,500 RPM. If you keep your foot in it, it'll surprise you at how quickly it accelerates. Once you rev it past four grand or five grand, the thing just comes alive. Which is a really Italian thing, is a high revving engine. Put your foot down and Ghibli screams from zero to 60 in just under 4.8 seconds. It's an emotional experience because you're waiting for it, waiting for it, and then boom, it hits. It's very clear when you get in the, the Ghibli that somebody paid attention to the way that engine sound and the way the sound responds to what the transmission's doing. Keep your foot down long enough and the Ghibli will reach a top speed of 284 kilometers an hour. Ghibli is a quietly fast car. It sneaks up on you. You don't realize just how quickly you're going. You watch that ne needle on the speedometer go, how did I get here? It pulls and pulls and pulls. Lightweight construction paired with 50-50 weight distribution help give the Ghibli a sporty feel on the track. One of the, the great things about Italian cars in general, and Maserati does this very well, is that they keep this emotional connection in the vehicle. You can get in some cars, and it's a piece of machinery. It gets you from point A to point B, and does it just fine, does it perfectly reliable, but there's nothing particularly exciting about it. You don't walk in your garage every day and smile. After years of planning, the Ghibli is ready to add a touch of Italian flair to the mid-sized saloon market. Where the Maserati's bold gamble to expand pays off is now up to customers around the world. Supercars are built to a standard. They're not built to a price. When you start building a car like this that has to compete in the fifty dollars to $100,000 segment, you have to start building things to a price, and you have to start cutting corners. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a bigger challenge. The car's a soul to it. It wants to be driven. It rewards you. When you go around a corner and you push it, you get this great sound. The draw of this car is unquestionably the way it looks and the emotions it evokes. It, it looks, it sounds, it smells, it feels. That's what the Ghibli is about. If you don't want any of that in your car, there are plenty of other options. If you want something different, something that makes you feel special every day, that's why you bought the Maserati.